Pediatric IBD involves two diseases that cause inflammation in the GI tract. They're lifelong diseases. They're ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. 30 years ago, the drug that we used primarily to treat these diseases was prednisone. Prednisone was very good at controlling the symptoms, but produced some major bad side effects. Since then, newer drugs have been developed, uh, both uh, in terms of classes of drugs, uh, but also we've learned how to use some old drugs in better ways. The uh, treat focus of treatment has changed from controlling symptoms to mucosal healing because we know these are progressive diseases and chronic inflammation leads to progressive damage. We have a variety of new diagnostic tools available to us. The difference between scopes that are available, endoscopes and colonoscopes that are available to us now versus the ones we had 30 years ago are just amazing. We have new imaging techniques, particularly magnetic resonance enterography, which provides us great imaging of the small intestine without the radiation involved in CT scans. We can also use wireless capsule endoscopy to assess the small bowel in ways we could never do before. The treatments are more complicated and more tailored to individual patients, so that we have drugs called immunomodulators that are perfectly appropriate for some patients. For other patients, we may use drugs called biologicals, which do involve things like intravenous infusions and so forth. They require some special expertise. Children's is contributing to new knowledge in pediatric IBD all the time. We participate in several different types of studies. One is a collaborative registry where we enroll patients who are newly diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease and compile that data with data from 25 other centers and then look at what happens to these patients over time with normal care. That registry started in 2002 and has produced a tremendous amount of important information. The risk stratification trial enrolled newly diagnosed patients with Crohn's disease that had a goal of trying to identify which patients were going to have a bad complication within a couple of years. Enrollment for that trial has already been completed. We're in the follow-up phase and we've already generated some very useful information from it. The multidisciplinary team is most important for following patients with IBD because they have a whole variety of problems. For some patients, it's the psychological stress of dealing with the disease or the depression that can be associated with the disease. For others, uh, it's growth issues uh, and how best to optimize uh, their growth and development. For still others, they may need a surgical procedure. And so having surgeons who can offer them minimally invasive surgery oftentimes will help to speed uh, their recovery. Excellent radiology is important for making appropriate diagnoses, both of the disease and of the complications. The two new things in the treatment of IBD are first the philosophy that we are trying to get mucosal healing rather than just control symptoms, and second are many of the drugs that we have available to us, particularly the biologicals, which uh, can change patients' lives entirely.